Why don't, you, why don't you start us off by giving us your uh, your name, Josie? What's your what's your full, what's your full name? How are you born? Your full name. My full name. Full name for the record. Well, I hate to give it to you. Well, you you tell it. I well, I tell it. It's your story, Josie. Uh, well, let's see, I was born and all of it. They named me Josephine S. LaChapelle, Silva LaChapelle. Well, they didn't name you LaChapelle, right? You were born Silva. Yeah, yeah did you I said Josephine Silva LaChapelle. Right, and what was, your, what was your middle name before you were married? That's what it was. Just Josephine Silva? Yeah. Oh, my maiden name was always a Silva. Uh -huh. and, and when were you born? Uh, 12, 18, 17. And let's see, you, you, you were born here in Vacaville, right? Right. Where, I was born here in Vacaville, yeah. Where, where were you born? Well, it, I was born on Monta Vista Street, where John's agreement, when John, where John liquor store is now. Oh, that was a little before my time. Didn't well, I guess so. Where, where was it exactly? Pardon me? Where was it exa exactly? What? Where was it exactly? Where were you born exactly? Right there with John Creamer's, with uh, John, John Liquor Store. Is that today? The Liquor Store is there today? Yeah, <clears throat> I was born there where John Liquor John Liquor Store is on one okay. of those. And uh, let's see, so you were born in Vacaville. How did your family come to Vacaville? How, how did they come to live here? Well, my father was uh, a seaman and uh, he used to go back and forth to San Francisco. He had a brother in San Francisco. And, <coughs> and I guess <coughs> he decided to, I don't know, quit there and, <coughs> and come and live with his brother. And then he met my mother. She came from Spain and they, uh, they got married when they were tw uh, 21 and, and 20 years of age. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they, they married here in Vacaville. No, they married in San Francisco. And what was, your, what was your father's name and where was he from? He was from Portugal. He was uh, Andrew Silva. Mm -hmm. And how about your mother? What, what was she her, came from Spain. What was her maiden name? Uh, Medina. Medina. And, and what years were they born? Do you remember? No idea. Mm -hmm. So they, they came to Vacaville. You said your uh, your father came to live with his brother. What did your father do? I don't know much about him. I met him once. What, what, did, he do? <clears throat> what did he do? Well, he did everything. He, he was a. <clears throat> um, he used to bore well. He was a cement. He built a lot of cement here in town. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of work. As a matter of fact, he even helped build this bridge over here. Oh, really? The, mm -hmm. the bridge uh, did, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of Main Street? That's right. And <clears throat> and they, they owned property over on, it was Monta Vista and Brown Street, right around there, right? Yeah. How, how big of a piece of property was it? Do you know? Well, the, on, where, on, where uh, on Brown Street, that was four and a half acres. Uh-huh. And the one there here in town was just a small piece of place. So, my mother said to ask you that your, your, she said your dad used to make wine. Yeah, he did. Oh, golly. Down in the basement or something, down below or something like that. He sure did make darn good wine. No wine like they do. You can, they can't find wine today like my father used to make. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that as long as I live, as, as long as I live. They made wonderful wine. Was it grape Gr wine or something? Grape else? wine. Uh -huh. They didn't put all this stuff that they put in there now. He made real good wine here. <laughs> in those days, <clears throat> the few bosses in town, they used to come down to the place and go down the cellar with my father and drink. <laughs> <laughs> was, there, was there anyone you remember? Huh? Who, who do you remember coming over? Well, the uh, Bunny Power was one of them, and then the others, uh, who, oh, I think it was Elmo Alley, and um, uh, Joe Statfield was another one that I remember. Well, I don't know those names. Who, who were they? They were. Uh, <clears throat> Joe Stafford was a constable here in town at one time, and Elmo Alley was, um, he was a police, kind of a back row policeman at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was, a, and of course, Money Power, everybody knew him.
And then there's other people mm -hmm. that I. And your my, my mom said that your your mother used to make everything by hand, like absolutely like, everything by hand. No machines at that time. Yeah. Like, what are some examples? Oh, like butter, mm -hmm. make <clears throat> churning the and homemade bread. And um, and oh, she used to make our our birthday cakes and stuff. She used to make it in a Dutch oven outside. A big, beautiful Dutch oven. Oh, they don't, you don't find those anymore. Dutch oven. Oh, that was a beautiful thing. I wish I had a picture of it. But it's all gone. And how about clothes out of flower sacks? I oh, and I, oh. Where, where are your clothes made out of flower sacks? Uh, uh, excuse me. Then my mother used to make beer mm -hmm. also. And, uh, <clears throat> and root beer. And then I remember the beer. <laughs> she used to keep it down the basement. <laughs> I guess she didn't cap it enough. And at night we used to sleep and we used to hear down the basement pop, pop. The beer, the, the beer, pop. the root beer was popping. <laughs> oh, it was funny as all get. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sure, no, this is, this is great. <laughs> they, they we, more detail is better. We want to hear. The what? More detail is better. We want to hear everything oh. about everything. How about, how about fruit picking? I, I, I hear you. The hear what? Me. Fruit picking. Oh. Yeah, you, you and your family used to pick a bunch of fruit, I understand. In the summer, school was out. <clears throat> we used to go pick prunes out in, uh, <clears throat> out in the country, out uh, between Vacaville and Fairfield. It used to be Henry Turner's place. And it's, uh, it was right there where they had this, um, what's that big nursery there that they had there between here and Vacaville? I'm in Fairfield. What's that big nursery they had? Where they grew the uh, sod? Pardon me? Where they grew the sod, the grass, and, and they took it out. No, it's not there any longer. Oh, that should be Heinz, isn't it? H I N E Heinz. Heinz, I guess that's what. Yeah. yeah, it was right back in there, right by the creek. Mm -hmm. Then there was a. We used to go pick prunes there all summer, mm -hmm. and then our school started, and then we had to leave and come to, and come to school, and we used to leave my mother and father there picking. Well, we. Had, <clears throat> And then when school was out, then we used to go back and finish up the stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was nice, clean. For, it was nice and clean. We didn't mind it at all. Sure. And what did you do with the fruit? Did you sell the fruit then? Or? No, it wasn't. We used to work for these. Oh. For for Henry Turner was his name. Mm -hmm. We used to work for him. He, we, the orchard and everything was his, and we had to <clears throat> pick the fruit, knock the fruit down, and pick the fruit off of the ground. And put it in boxes and haul it away. And then, then he used to have a dehydrator there where he used to dry his own fruit or dry his own prunes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was different. Like nowadays, we used to work. We didn't mind. It. Nowadays, kids all you have to do give them a car and take off, you go out in the road and get killed on an automobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buy them a car. <laughs> I want, to, I want to spend a little time talking about your, your early childhood. Um, I've got a bunch of things we can talk about. But let, let's start with let's start with school. Can you oh. tell me about uh, about your very earliest memories with school? Uh, oh, brother! Grammar school and eventually high school. But let's, let's start early. How about your, your early school? My school. I was so shy. I would not look up at the school at the teacher. I wouldn't look up at all. Not at all. Like we used to. My mother used to when we were kids <laughs> walk us to school downtown probably get a pair of shoes or go to dinner or something the teacher was walking on the other side i used to i used to go across the street on the other one i didn't want to see a teacher in the school can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the building itself uh the, the school building you used to go to oh it was a beautiful school i'm sorry they really turned the tore it down there's nothing like it honest to god can, a beautiful. Can you, can you think back and describe it a bit? How, how was it? Like it was. It was rather. It was rather. It was a long. It was rather long, and I think it started. I can't recall exactly um, where it started from. What grade it started from? Fourth, fifth, six, maybe fifth or sixth grade to the eighth grade, mm -hmm. and then you were um, mm -hmm. graduated from us from there, and. Um, it was a beautiful school, I can remember very plainly. Um, and it was, we had a lot of windows, a lot of, we used to see the cars, the highway, <clears throat> the cars go by, looking out the window. <clears throat> and, um, oh, 
And how about your how about the classrooms and teachers uh, any, any specific you know, we had the, we, we had good teachers compared to now these teachers that they have they don't well anyway excuse me for that I know you got a daughter as a teacher <laughs> The rest of Not them. talking about them. Oh, we had, those were great teachers, boy. They really, they really put the law on you, boy. They put the work on you. How, how did they do that? How, how did they? Well, they, they, they used to keep you. They used to keep you after school, and uh, you did your work there, and um, you, they wouldn't let you go until you got your work done. That's one way of helping you. Sure. And then, if they you couldn't do your work there at school, the teachers used to say, "Well, you come back, and I'll help you with your schoolwork." And that's about the size of it, but you know. Did you have any uh, any good friends in school when you were? Oh, I had a lot of good friends. I had a lot of friends. Tell, tell us about some of your best your best friends in school. Oh, well, my best best two girlfriends. They moved from I don't remember what grade they were in seven, six, eight, or eighth grade. They moved from they were uh, Joe the barber's cousins, and they moved from here. And they went to move to Brentwood. They were my two best girlfriends I had. Then I had others. And we used to conjugate, I mean, together. And then we had other girls that used to come in and, in our group. And we didn't like them always. We went on our own. But anyhow, <clears throat> we had always with real nice girls. I had really nice girls, good girls. So what, what would you do at school together? And what would you do after school? What did you do for fun? Well, and, uh, let me tell you about school. Then in uh, going to school, high school, I became in sports. And that I liked. I was good in every sport. In all my four years, I was played in every game that we had. I don't care what game it was, what it was in. I played in every. And everybody said, oh, we've got to have silver for the captain. We've got to get silver. And they chose me all the time, every time. And as a matter of fact, I thought yellow. A v over here, he's got one. I had a bunch of V's mm -hmm. for, for Vacaville, yeah. And um, what was your favorite sport? Pardon me. What was your favorite sport? They were all. I liked them all. And then we used to play um, when the uh, service came in. We used to play with the, the girls at the base. They used to call them the whack, whack, wax or something like that. Mm -hmm. We used to play with them in the evening. Mm -hmm. Of course, these are skunkers. They were tougher than we were in high school. <laughs> high school, but anyway. That was good old days. I wish we had more of them. How about uh, how about church? I want to. There, Vacaville sort of known for various churches around town. Right? Oh, church! church. You're talking about, about the church. Down. You said that you know, church burned down when we were kids. I was, I was just. I think it must have been my first day in school. I went to, uh, to school. It was up on a hill by the Spanish. They used to call it the Spanish Town at one time, or Spanish Hill. And uh, they said it was a church. We went to school there. <laughs> I cried all the time. <laughs> I was afraid to leave Mama. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> let's see, from there, I, let's see, I cried. And they, and they said, then I found out, found later, or I don't know how much later or anything, that. Uh, they said the school burnt down, the church burnt down, and it was just a small church and stuff. And they used to say that the Spanish people burned it down, but who knows, you know. That was the old Catholic church, right? It was a, little, a small Catholic church. It was just almost like a house or something like that, small thing. And that's about all I can remember. I can remember when I was first went to school, I went, uh -huh. uh -huh. First day, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. And there was a lady, Spanish lady, out there next door, says, she comes out and gives me a piece of swami. I'll never forget that one. No. Well, anyway, that's how it goes. How about, um, do you remember being downtown much when you were a kid? Do what? Do you remember being downtown on Main Street as a kid? What, what do you remember from, being, from your very early childhood? Did you come downtown in the early days? Well, I can remember when I was young, we used to, my mother used to take us to the dentist, and it was a Chinese or Japanese dentist. <clears throat> and it was Vacaville had, had um, one side was Chinese, the other side was Japanese. And then as you walked in there, and <clears throat> was walking there, you had a platform that you walked on, not Seaman or anything like that. It was a platform that you walked. 
little different than it is now. And uh, that's about all I can remember on that. That on that, and then I can remember it's like Sam's Club, not Sam's Club, um, the Chinese restaurant. What was it, Sam's? Uh, is this the one that was uh, yeah, behind that, the, the church on, on uh -huh. Main and Parker? Yeah, that one there. Then that came in, and that was a beautiful place to eat. I know you told me about that earlier. Can you, can you describe it now, though? Pardon me? You told me about the, the Chinese restaurant earlier. Can you describe it again, though? <clears throat> uh, the, the restaurant used to call it Sam. Sam's Place. And people from all over used to come to eat at that place. They had the best... Ch uh, Chinese food, you could ever eat any place. Mm -hmm. And they don't make that food anymore. People came from all over. It was just a hole in the ground, per se, <laughs> and that place was packed with people with, you had money, no money. Everybody came in. And that was good food. And then I guess life went on after that. Oh, and they had to, he had, a boy and a girl, I don't know what happened to them. And they lived right down the street where from where they, the place was, the restaurant. I think the house is still up there too, if I remember right. That's I'm nice. trying to think back of things you used to tell me about and uh, you were looking through some old photographs of Vacaville and I saw you were interested in the train depot building. You want to tell me about the old train depot building over there on the depot, what's now Depot Street? <clears throat> Yeah, I can remember <clears throat> very young. My mother and father taking the mate to the train depot. And we were supposed to be going to, <laughs> to San Francisco to, uh, to an aunt's place. But you know, as I was so young, I don't remember getting on or getting off. <laughs> but it was, and I, honest to God. And I'll remember that, waiting for the train. And the train, always oh, it was something nice to see the train come by there. Not big, loud noise or anything, you know. It was nice. And then the icebox, the fruit train, trains used to come by, load up with fruit, and a lot of ice used to fall on the ground. We used to go pick it up because at that time we didn't have a refrigerators, and all we had was ice boxes. And so we, my brothers used to go to the... Uh, uh, where the train was, get all the ice that fell on the ground, go pick it up and haul it home, put it in the ice box. That's the way it went for those days. But it was fun, you know. And then there was uh, that diamond Nash, diamond match. That was a beautiful diamond match. Um, <clears throat> and that was a lumberyard type thing. A big, long thing. We used to walk through that tunnel when it rained or something. Big, boy, and I smell that wood it was so nice. You know, they kept it nice and clean. And uh, Mr. Pritchard was the one that used to run it. I don't know what happened to them. But anyhow, that's where you are. Now, I remember you telling me some time ago that, that you used to be picked on when you were a kid. The pick what? The, that you used to be picked on when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. What, what, why, why were people picking on you? I guess they were jealous of our family. There were the Spanish people we used to walk to school. We used to, as we were kids, we used to have to hold hands going to, to and from school. With well, the Spanish people coming out, and they, they used to talk bad to us, and we just kept on going. And then later on, they throw rocks at us and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, they were just jealous at our family. Every one of them. Why and, and, one, uh, and one time, there was a, it was on the Halloween coming out along, and the teachers gave us a, <clears throat> A Halloween mask or something, you know, and my sister had had hers flew away. The wind blew it, and so we were walking. That was down the, the where's Depot Street, <clears throat> and uh, the wind blew that little piece of paper or whatever it was. It blew it towards where this Spanish girl was going home, and at that, that time I got I don't gee, it was quite a while ways, and I picked up a rock. And I threw it, and I hit the girl right on the head with that rock. <laughs> and then that evening, if that, if the father come to my father's place and says, you have to pay for this because you hit my, my daughter, and she was blood, she had to go to the doctor, and this and that. And my father said, well, there's kids for you. But he didn't have to pay, he didn't pay anything. You know. <laughs> but I just picked that rock up, 
And it was a long ways, and I didn't think I could throw a rock that far. And I'm no kidding. And hit it right on the head. I've heard that before. <laughs> that's how that's that's how it was. You know. I want to move on to high school at some point, but um, tell, tell me just a little bit more about your, your family, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, and uh, things like what would you do for Christmas? Just tell me about your family life at home. Oh, boy. Well, I remember on Christmas time, and let's put it that way, we had this uncle that used to live in San Francisco. He used to come and play Santa Claus for us kids at home all the time. And they're, real, they're really great people, really nice people. And uh, what was his name? Jack? Jack? No, not uh, Jack Silva, I guess his name was. I forget his name now. But, but anyhow, that's. Now you you yeah. had a lot of brothers and sisters. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, there was, how many brothers and sisters did you have? <clears throat> well, there's eight, nine of us, with, including me. And uh, we were a close family at that well. We were a close family. We liked each other. We never fought or anything like that. Of course, like kids, you know, like you used to do with your sister. Well, kids like that, we got along and everything. But after people get married and stuff on their own, then they got to squabble here and squabble there. We got along. We weren't, we weren't no bad people. And there are too many We were bad. good. We were good. I'll tell you what. We were a good family. Just put it that way. And I'm proud of what. The way my mother and father raised us. You speak to an adult, you, you say, sir. You go to a per person's house, he got a hat on. You don't go in a house, in my father's house, with a hat on. That's the kind of man he was. He was kind of t a little rough a little bit, but then he worked hard for what he had. And, and as a, one time or other, people should say, hey, Andy, you should buy this, you should buy that. Now, my father was afraid to take chances. He, they said he could own all of Macaville at the time, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't take a chance because he was afraid, because he had a fam, big family and always afraid that something might go you know, wrong. And, but, uh, if, you, if you had to think about the, the, the things you learned most from your parents, what did you learn most from your parents? About my parents? The, the most important things you learned from them. From them? Yeah. To get along? With, with each other. Gee, they just taught us the right from wrong. That's all I can say. And, you know, do the best you can and help people. Help people that really need your help. That was one of the main things they taught us. And like everybody, don't fight or anything. I don't know where I speak. There's a lot more that you do, but <laughs> is there any, anything anything else you remember that we haven't talked about? Uh, you have lots of memories, but what are what are some of the things that stick out the most before we move on to, to later years? Hmm. I don't know exactly what else it is. Shall we move on to, to high school? Pardon me? How about, how about high school? I wanted to talk to you about high school. Oh. Your days in high school. You went to the old Vacaville High School. Yeah, I liked high school. <laughs> That's where I, this is where I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> when I got in high school, then I got to, then my smarts, my brains opened up. <laughs> yeah. bit, it, uh, when I was in grammar school, my brains were closed. <laughs> what, do you, what do you remember about going to high school? In high yeah, school? Just, yeah, I've got some particular questions, but just what, what do you remember about it? God, in high school? God, it was just yesterday. <laughs> in high school? What did I do in high school? I don't know. All I liked is just everything. I, sports was the main thing. It's the only thing I, that I know that I went to school for. <laughs> I know I used to like I used to like history and geography, those two subjects I liked, and um, that's about the size of it, I guess. How about the teachers? Do you remember who the teachers were? In oh, some of, yeah. You, I remember. Huh? Name a few. Oh, let's see. Miss Co Miss Cox was on one of them. Miss um, Oh, Miss Cox. Yeah, what? What was that? The one, the history teacher that I was thinking about. But Dobbins, Mrs. Dobbins was another one. Oh, goodness, Miss Fry was another one that I had. <clears throat> and uh, Miss Nevin was the other one in, high, in school. 
And then what was the nurse? What was the nurse? She was a tall, skinny nurse. And I can't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember her name right now. I just don't remember. Oh yeah. So let's see. So were, were the school colors still black and orange back then? What were the school oh, yeah, colors? Yeah, the, the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were black and orange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wish I'd have kept all my um, my stripes and the V, the back of the whole thing. But I don't know what happened to. Them. So, so let's see, did you, huh? I'm going to make you blush, did you have any boyfriends in high school? Me? No. I never was boy, I was never boys crazy. Never. Never. I never did. I know going to, when I was in grammar school, there was a, the desk. <clears throat> they had, we had individual desks, there was an inkwell there, and uh, there was a boy, Spanish kid sitting behind me, who used to get my hair and stick, stick my hair in the way into the, into the inkwell. Do you remember his name? Oh, he passed on. He got, he died from uh, malaria one summer. He died. He went swimming someplace, and he got malaria and he passed away. So what, what would you do during during high school? What would you do for fun after school? After what, school, yeah. well, from school we went straight home. Tell me about being a teenager in Vacaville. Huh? Tell me about being a teenager in Vacaville. Uh, we didn't do anything when we were teenagers. We went straight home and did our work, what we had to do, and we never. Um, went around. We always came home and we never went to dances on the weekends or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We never did. We were just home, home people, home body. And you told me a story about dropping uh, seeds or leaves from the school building. The what? The, you told me a story about dropping seeds or leaves. Oh, that was the, the school yeah, those, uh, yeah, the leaves off the school. Uh, was school. that at the high school building or the old grammar school? Uh, that one, not the one below, the one up on top, above it. The one, the, the two-story, three-story building, that's the one. We should go up there and get those leaves. These should spin around. That's it. That's it? Good. I want to I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, you used to work at the Metri for a long time. Oh, brother. Now, I, I want to spend a long time talking about the Metri with you. Um, how, did, how did you start working for the Metri? How did I? Yeah. Well... Let's see. Let me put it this way. When I, when, first, when I got out of school, we went one time, one summer, work with the Libby's Cannon on tomatoes. <laughs> that was just because we were just trying it because everybody talked about working on tomatoes. And that was one year. We had a ball. <clears throat> and then uh, th that summer was over. And then, um, I thought, oh, yeah. so <clears throat> then we were home. I was home. And uh, always home. And I never went anywhere. And so, um, sitting out on the front porch, Mrs. Power used to drive the back and forth. <clears throat> she stopped by one day and she asked me if I wanted to go to work for her. And I said, Oh, well, yeah, I'll go to work. Well, because I was too shy to even look for work. If I didn't, if I didn't have her, I, I wouldn't have gone to work any place. I, I was too shy to go to ask for work. So she stopped by and asked me, and I said, Yeah, I'll go. So I did. And, Stayed there ever since. Mm -hmm. I started with M Emma McCadden out in a little pantry, little hole, and then I went into um, waitress work, which they were really proud of what I did. Of course, she used to praise me for no. Well, anyhow, so much for that. Now I'm given to understand that the, the waitresses used to uh, help the, the power kids get ready for school. Yeah. Just tell me about that a little bit. The power family. Yeah. Well, I know Ada used to go, the kids, get, uh, Ada used to give them the money to go to get their lunch. So they go and have their breakfast and they give them the lunch. Then they go get the bus and then they, from the bus they come to the nut, to the toy shop where I was working all the time. And they came and spent their time waiting for the bus and what have you. And then I used to babysit them and uh, I guess that's about, the, uh, <clears throat> I, hear I guess I must have been a good babysitter because they always came after me. Yeah, you, you babysat everyone, right? Who, who, Do what? You, you babysat everyone. Who did you? Just babysat? all of them. Can you name them? Who, who oh them? goodness! Who do you remember? Give me a story or two. Oh, they're all of them. I just put all of them. I said I've watched them all. Mary Helen's 
six kids, and I watched Ed's kids and uh, Peggy's kids. I watched them all. And now uh, Peggy's kids are contacting me all the time. They're calling me. Mm -hmm. They're coming over to the house now and bringing things to me and what have you. And that's about it. So. What do you remember from you weren't a waitress very long, right? How long were you? I was you oh I don't know. I wait I did waitress for a long time. For quite some time. And then they opened up the toy shop and I was called to the toy shop. Mm -hmm. I was the first one to open the toy shop mm -hmm. and I worked there for twenty five years. And then I had to my became of age and they said, Well, we don't need you anymore, you know. They put you out in pasture. Some pasture. <laughs> So you also worked in the fountain area, right? Oh, that yeah. fountain. I hear something about milkshakes and custard and pancake batter. Oh, yeah. Oh. I used to make some real good milkshakes over there. Worked in a patio, had really nice. And that was an open, that was the old place before they put the new ones on. They, they built the new one. They had the old one, they had shades, or wood shades they had to cover up at night, put them back up. And, and move everything away. Yep. I don't know if they have any pictures of that either. That's the nut tree. Have you ever seen any? No, oh, not, not, not a bad no. Oh, gee. People used to come out and eat out and then front, out in front there and watch all the cars go by. Oh, it was nice. It was really nice. But that place is really missed, so. How about the toy shop now? Uh... You, you worked at the toy shop for 25 years, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I hear from my mother that you ran a tight ship at the nut tree. Did I what? You ran a tight ship at the toy shop. You ran a tight ship. A tight ship? Mm -hmm. A place, yeah. So, what do you mean by that? You, you, you like things the way you like them. Oh. Oh, yeah. That had to be my way or no way. <laughs> 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 and then the boss liked it. And they never came up and say they never once said, I don't like what you're doing. They always complimented me. And if they didn't compliment me, no news is good news. Mm -hmm. So they're always and who, proud. And who, who was your boss? Probably me, Ed, Ed Jr. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing that the nutry used to do for me. God bless them all. They, um, on my birthdays, they had, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> they had, uh, between the coffee tree and the nutry, they had, at one time, they told me they had at least a thousand people working for them. Okay, <clears throat> and then they uh, they told me on my birthdays they used to <clears throat> of all the people on my birthday, I was the only one that they ever gave any birthday parties to. I was the only one of all those people that I know of. In a closing time, there was Bunny and all of them with a birthday cake and all that stuff. And one time they said, well, another, I said, well, they, they gave me another one. And that one time I said, no, I'm not going to go. And I didn't know they were going to give me a birthday party. And I didn't go and I was, I felt bad about it. But anyway, they, they were prepared for it. <laughs> but I didn't go. But anyway, that's, a, I was the only one, and I'll brag on that. And I got presents from them and all that kind of stuff. But I was the only one that they ever gave, that I know of. Mm -hmm. A birthday. Well, why, why do you think that is? I have no idea. Maybe they didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, tell, tell me a bit about your uh, your coworkers at the Net Tree. My what? Your coworkers. My coworkers? Yeah, who, at, at the toy shop. Who do you remember working with at the toy shop? Tell, tell me well, about, there, yeah. everybody was nice. Your mom, your mom was. Um, Really helped me. She was really great. I was really happy to have her because what I didn't know why she. I used to go. <clears throat> I used to go to her and say, "What about this or what about that?" She used to tell me. She used to correct me every time. And when it came to something, but somebody returned something, and I had to make change for them. I said, "Get that. Figure this out. How much it was? Oh, how much do I owe? Oh, this or that?" She used to correct it, and I used to take care of that there. And then. <clears throat> The thing is, another thing is about the nut tree, there's um, <clears throat> um, some of the girls, they were so jealous of me that they wanted to see me out. So one time, Mrs. Power hired a girl and she said, um, she hired her, 
she come to work the next day, and uh, she says, uh, uh, she hired her, she hired her, and she worked. And, uh, <clears throat> and that girl was, uh, well, I was supposed to train her, right? I, was, I trained her. I trained her before she was supposed to work. Okay, she came into work one day, and she said, <clears throat> and that day, that night, or the next morning or so, Mrs. Power comes to me, she says, Josie, do you know anything about this hundred dollar bill, this hundred dollars is missing? I said, what? I said, I know nothing about it. So I said, you see, Mrs. Power, she was after that girl wanted my job. She said, she went in and told them that I was too bossy. So I went in and I said, you see, Mrs. Power? She says, I was too bossy. But see, she was trying to kick me out so she could take over. But the next day, she was $200 missing. So I says, there you go. <clears throat> and there's stuff like that. But anyway, and every time Mrs. Power in the morning, she used to come to the toy shop and say, Josie, do you know this? Do you know that? I said, no, I don't know this or that. She always came to me and talked to me about nice things, what went on, what I did right, and what she liked and didn't like, you know, and everything like that. But they never, ever said one thing, let me tell you, that they dis disliked about me that I did over there. Not once, Zachary, did they ever, ever say, I don't like what you did there. Never. Tell me about running the toy shop. What did, what did it take to run the toy shop? Tell me, tell me the, the, about the jobs and tasks that you did. Did what? Tell me about the jobs that you did at the toy shop. What, what did you do there? Yeah, what I did it, everything. What I did, did it take to run the shop? Well, I did a little, I did a, some uh, shopping. I did the shopping for, I don't know, a year or two years. And uh, I did everything I straightened up. I marked the merchandise. How about wrapping books? Wrapping books. <laughs> 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 yeah, wrapping. <laughs> Wrapping, we did everything. We just keep the, keep the place clean and everything up to date and just work it, keep it clean and nice and not, mm -hmm. and be nice to people. <laughs> now, unless they were smoking. Oh, if they were smoking, well, some people come into the short toy shop and I'm over at the counter and they're right over there, <clears throat> smoking. And I never smoked anything. Come smoke with a cigarette and then that breath talking to you and you can breathe there. Oh boy, and I used to go like this. And then they then they used to go tell the boss about that. I used to go this, didn't like that. And then Mrs. Power came to me and said, Well, maybe you shouldn't be working back there. And I said, Well, that's the way it goes. They shouldn't be smoking in front of me either. <laughs> so that's the way it went. <laughs> well, anyhow, that's the way it got. Exactly. <laughs> so tell so how about some of your favorite customers? My, my mom said that uh, Gene Alexander used to come in all the time. Oh, there were any really nice you people. Plane, you would fly to the nut tree, right? Oh, they had a lot of nice people come in over there. A lot of nice. They were really good people too. And the, uh, and the salesmen, the salesmen were nice too. Really nice people. They were all nice. Let's put it that way. I used to like to work with Roy Murphy. There's another thing somebody said when they hired first hired Roy Murphy to come do the buy-in in the toy shop. They said to him, somebody that was jealous of me again, they said, she says she's not going to help Roy, and help him out, you know, to get him started. I said, I never said anything like that. And I never knew anything about it. You know, I never said anything about it. I said, I don't know the guy. Why should I talk to him like that about, you know, like that? And I says, well, that's the way it goes. But anyway, they hired him. He was hired and all that. Not on account of me or anything. He was pretty good at it. I liked him. I liked Roy. He was a nice guy. As a matter of fact, I liked everybody there. Everybody. There wasn't one person that I could say that I disliked. You must have known the train drivers pretty well. Oh. I had some names like Joe Power and Charlie Menzies and. The, oh, there was a Charlie. There was Charlie McKenzie. Remember him? Yeah. Oh, he was a nice guy. And Joe Power, yeah, Money Power's brother. Yeah, Joe, he's a great guy. Did you ever drive the train? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I drove the train before Joe came in. 
before they hired him. Oh yeah, it was fun. There was nothing to it. Now I heard you used to stop the train to pick figs. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I used to stop there going there. It's, 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 <laughs> and he used to get some of those figs and eat some of those figs. <laughs> oh, I just loved it. And you know, I think that fig tree's still there. And many times I feel like going out there and pick some figs. I don't know, but I might get shot. <laughs> He says that next next year if the fig tree is there we'll go get some. <laughs> we'll go ask over there. Ask the pet shop guy if they, if they know who owns that. We're gonna go pick some figs. <laughs> how about well, uh, how about uh, I'm trying to think of things I remember from the toy shop. How about Santa? Oh yeah. What? How about, Santa? how about your dad coming in and oh. buying the train, yeah. getting some train? I used to give him the key to look under the cabinets and look for the. Yeah, my, to see what you want. My dad is George Fruling. Uh huh. And George so Fruling. Yeah, George so Fruling, and and his mom used to go over there and mm -hmm. and buy uh, a lot of toys, lots of trains. What did he do with all those trains? Uh, I have some of them. Oh, you do? I do. I even have one of the little uh, Markland locomotives with a net tree sticker on the side. Oh, you do? I do. Jeez. It was Markland trains, right? Mark. Yeah, Markland. Mark yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were neat. I used to love to sell those things. I heard you had some favorite toys too. Oh, which ones? The um, Hummels? Was it the Hummel dolls? Oh yeah. Gee, I should have bought a whole bunch of them. I mean, they were cheaper and all they were sky high. I can't even buy them. Now I heard you used to spend a lot of time with a Rubik's Cube when it came out. What was a Rubik's Cube? A cube that you would oh, try to match. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that one there. <laughs> and what about that other crystal one that you got? One of you kids lost one of them, a part of it. <laughs> uh, so you, either you did or my husband I threw it. No, I, I, either you, one of you kids, <laughs> either one of you kids or my husband threw it away because he couldn't put it together, and he threw it away so I couldn't put it together in front of him anymore. <laughs> I don't. <know>. But, <laughs> now my my mom remembers things like pet rocks and apple balls. Oh yeah. Tell, tell me about the apple dolls. That's something I've never heard about. What's an apple they, doll? Oh, they were made out of uh, uh, a corn something, huh, weren't they? Those apple dolls? They had apple faces. Yeah, they had, uh, and, they, and they were uh, like a uh, like corn husk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were all dressed differently. Uh, yeah, what about them? I, they didn't show me anything, but I wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't have one. Anymore. And I, I hear also that you didn't like the snowing Christmas tree. The, the what? Snowing Christmas tree at Christmas time. A Christmas tree that would snow. The Christmas tree that Roy Murphy bought and it had snow coming down and it had a big trough and all the kids would get in the snow. Don't remember that one? Mm -hmm. I do. A snowing Christmas tree. It was in the corner. I'll tell you what I do remember. Let's put it this way. <clears throat> you remember that big tree <clears throat> that they had out in front with yeah. all the, uh, with uh, in the middle of the fray? They had all the, they had a lot of Hummel dolls in every, in different places, in different holes. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, uh, the, we had the president, uh, Kennedy. I was in, I was there, at one, uh, uh, <clears throat> and in one of those cubby holes, they had a little television. And I was dusting around in there, and at that moment, I heard, <clears throat> Oh, they shot the president. And then oh, you, they will say, you came, or the guy came in, and he said, oh, so he said, good. They shot him, and he said, good, and then he took off. And I, and I was, oh, I was so, you know, I, I said, oh my God, that people were coming in and listening to the thing about when they shot the president, they, they shot him. But I was right there, right on the television, and I stood there till I could, couldn't want to hear anymore. Speaking of the president, how about uh, other famous people? Do you remember famous people at the Met Tree? Oh yeah, the, you that, yeah. Uh, one of the um, the Kaiser guys that was sick, one of the boys, all of us, and then the um, Walt Disney guy. What was his name? Walt Disney. Yeah, he came in there. Oh, and another another one, a bulldog face, uh, Kent Nixon. I didn't like him at all. You, you know when he first, you know when Nixon came, first came in there in the bus, and I'm telling it the way it is. When he came in and he got out of the bus, and, says, and he went right in front of the toy shop there, I says, is that guy going to run for president? 
I said, oh my God, I said, I don't like him, this and that. And he did, and he, he did run, but I, I, never, I never did like him. But it was a first glance. And I, said, I still don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Dixon. Excuse me, forgive me. <laughs> did, let's see, did you meet Ronald Reagan when he came to the... Uh, Reagan, yeah, Reagan was there. Yeah, I saw him, but uh, I didn't see too much of him. And then here's one time, one time that I can remember very plainly. I was in the toy shop and somebody went to the big, where the horses were. And uh, this man came out of that place and I said, and me looking out that way, and I was looking, I said, gee, that guy looks like an alcoholic. Lord and behold, he walks to the toy shop and he comes and tells me that he was an alcoholic. How did I know? I don't know that he was, but he came over and told me. I didn't even know the guy or the stranger. I'll never forget that either. A lot of strange things happened to me anyway. You know. Do you remember other famous people from the nutry? Who, who came through the doors over the years? Hmm. I don't know. Remind me. Can you remember? No, I, I think of anybody. I wasn't there. How about Jaeger? Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager. Do you remember Chuck, Chuck Yeager? Chuck Yeager? No. No? Mm -mm. Nope. Well, probably it was some other sneaky ones that came in, and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted, you said you were a waitress. So I wanted to ask you about some of the waitresses. So, uh, oh, oh, oh I've that's bunch, dangerous. I've got a bunch of names here. Oh, no. I've got, I've got uh, Ada. Ada. Dio. Oh, Dio. Oh, yeah. Uh, Claire. Who? Claire. Claire? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know too much about Claire, but uh, she's a, a Ada, I can tell you about her. Ada is a wonderful woman, and they don't make them like her anymore. And she was a real hard worker. Her father owned the, the what's, what's the name of that place there in the corner there? It was a restaurant here by the, where the Creekside restaurant. Right by the sidewalk, right at the end of the, right at the end of the. Right by the creek. Well, anyway. Oh, her father used to own that, and she used to go to school and come home from uh, for lunch and help at the restaurant, then go back and help. She's a good, good worker, a real honest person. They don't make them like her anymore. And Claire, I'm not sure about Claire because Claire came afterwards. She's okay. She's all right. I mean, I have nothing. I was never, I was never that close to her, but she's all right. I liked her. How about the how about the flower shop? I hear something about Mrs. Power wearing flower oh. hair all the time. Oh well, <laughs> Mrs. Power used to come. My mother had a beautiful garden, a beautiful garden out in front. And uh, Mrs. Power was a flower. Uh, she used to make flower arrangements for for the deceased people, <laughs> and uh, she used to stop at the house and ask my mother for some flowers. And my mother used to give her the flowers, cut flowers, you know, out of the garden. And that's about the size of it. She never did hear anything, but that's why she didn't even ask for that. <laughs> so I'm supposed to ask you about bunny pins. Who? Bunny pins. Bunny pins. Bunny pins, pins. Of, yeah. What about them? From Bunny Power. Oh, yeah. He made those bunny pins for everybody. Everybody got one of those, I hope, I think. <laughs> you still have yours? I got one. Yeah? yeah I got one. I got one. Mm -hmm. So th this is kind of a broad question, but so w what are some things that only you would remember? Some things no one else would remember that, that would be little bit things, big things, it doesn't matter, all from the nutry that only you might remember. One thing was that kind of bothers me was... Uh, that someone had said, and Bunny came to me one time, and he said to me, Josie, I don't want you to talk about Mary Helen. And I said, what? Talk about Mary Helen. And I never in my life opened my mouth about Mary Helen or talked about any of those kids or anybody. But somebody, see, somebody had it against me. So they were telling Bunny and Helen about different things about me. And it wasn't true, because I never never heard about it. And they left to go, they never said repeated it or they never said anything. They never came back. But Bunny told me that one time and I'll never forget that. 
it was it was outside. You remember where they had that new eating place out there, right there. But he was good about it, you know. I said, uh, I said, I don't remember, and I don't didn't know Mary Helen that well anyway. All I know is just was there, just a little goodbye. That's about it. How could I say anything? Something about the the water pipe at Mary Helen Powers' house. Oh my God! How'd you find that? <laughs> Who'd you find that out? Did you tell? We have, we, we have our sources. Oh, Suzanne. Well, Mary Helen and Jerry had gone on a month vacation or something. And I was taking care of the kids. I stayed overnight. And we used to eat at the restaurant. <laughs> and and <laughs> it was during summer. We used to get the kids started. We got the hose and buckets and everything. We ran through the house, in and out of the house, with buckets of water and the hose and everything. Oh, I said, oh my God, your mom and dad comes in, they're going to kill me. <laughs> well, anyway, we had fun. We had water fights and then there was, oh, we had fun. And then one of the girls were, she didn't want to get out of bed. She didn't want to go to school. That was a hard one. And that was Lisa. <laughs> oh, but anyway, they're all turned out good people. They're all nice. As far as I'm concerned, all those people, they got the blue blood as far as I'm concerned. Tell me about the different places you used to live around town. I hear something about a house on Luzina that you used, you got a loan for. Oh yeah, I used to. So yeah. Tell me, tell me about the various places you lived around back in the world. That's the only one. Mm -hmm. That's the only. My mother and father and that. That's about the only thing. And then you moved. The, I moved. Yeah. Oh, I was thirty. I think I was thirty-three and I bought that house and I paid uh, fifteen thousand fifty dollars for that place. Do you remember the address? And, uh, yeah, 118 Rosina Street. Okay. And I sold it. I could have gotten $30,000. And I uh, sold it to a poor family, really nice person, people. And I sold it for 25 instead of 30. I gave them a break. But I kind of got had $30,000 for it and it's 25. I gave him a break because he had children. And he, every place he went to rent, they said, well, we're going to sell this place. Well, they had to move. We're going to sell this place. Well, we're going to have to move. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to sell my house. You want to buy it? I said, yeah. So he said, so buy it. Buy it. So that's the kind of a person I am. As you know, Zachary. <laughs> you know, Zachary. You remember that picture? <laughs> that was funny. So just, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, I want to I want to talk about things a little bit later in life. You you were married twice. Oh no, I'm not going to tell you about that. That's my personal business. I'm not going to tell you about my life. You want to tell me about Larry at all? Oh, about Larry. Oh, Larry. Yeah. Larry was a good guy. He was okay. He was second husband, right? Yeah. I knew Larry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was doing my other life was doing not worthwhile talking. Sure. So why get into it? Larry, Larry was in the Air Force, right? Yeah. Oh well, no. Larry was in the Army. He was six years in the army and then he got out and went and joined the air force and he was there 20 23 years mm -hmm. or 23 years in the service and, and what, what did he do huh what kinds of things did he do in the air force what did he do all those years he, i don't know he worked on airplanes is all i know mm -hmm. but the, what part of the airplane i don't know was it the front end or the back end and how, did you, how did you meet him larry la chapelle was his oh, name oh oh yeah how did you meet him i mean well these friends of mine are going to have a their f uh, four, fifth child. They were in the Air Force also. They were going to have their fifth child, and um, it, was, it, was, uh, it was going to be. A, they were all boys. The one that was going to be born was a boy, and she didn't want him. I said, "Well, if you didn't want him, I'll take him. I'll pay whatever well, whatever the cost is, you know." Then the baby came along, she wouldn't let go of him. <laughs> and uh, they were really nice people. Oh, really nice people. Jeez. And what year did you get married to Larry? Huh? When, when did you get married to Larry? 1970. Huh. Tell me about your wedding. Oh, well, the wedding. The nut tree took care of everything. I did nothing. They took charge. Everything. They've done everything. Mary Helen and Mr. Power. 
I had nothing to do with it. They, they, they just took charge. And then when it came to dinner, the first thing, I took care of their little bill. And then the bill was a steal. And I had, I don't know, there was about 100 people at the way, at the, I'm not sure there was a 150 or 100 or 200 people at the wedding. And I took care of the bill. And it was a steal. Real much. I got a real good, all the, all the champagne and everything was, everything was fine and dandy. Big metric discount? Oh, well, more than, it was more than a discount. <laughs> it, was, it, was almost, it, was, it was more than a discount. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, it was a steal. <laughs> Gee, come on. Take me. <laughs> now, while we're talking about Larry, I remember now, now when I was born, Larry made me a, a nut tree rocking horse. Oh, and yeah. I remember that. I said, we still have the horse. Well, it was, a, it was a deal between your mother and myself. But your mother used to come to work every morning and she said, well, I'm gonna, when I have a child, when I have a child, when I have a child, oh, you're not going to have a child, you're just talking. <laughs> she always says, oh, yeah? And so, I say, okay. She said, you want to bet? I said, yeah, I'll bet. And uh, what I said, I said, uh, did you say I bet a horse? Or I, you said, I bet? I'll bet you one of those nut tree hobby horses. Do what? I said, I'll bet you one of those nut tree hobby horses. Hobby horses, and what they, what did I say? And what you did, said okay. And what did you? And what was my? If you lost, if I won, what was your? I don't know what happened if you won. <laughs> it wasn't good. And then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, I lost. The, I lost. So um, Larry came. <laughs> Zachary came along, and of course Larry had to build a horse. And he did a beautiful job. He really took his time. And I think he did a better job than what the the other, you know. It's true. Really, really is nice. And you're not supposed to give that horse away or sell it or anything. Remember that. that. You too, Zachary. Right. That's a beautiful horse for your kids too. Yeah. You know? I've got a lot of other things we can talk about. Maybe we should take a break. Take a break? Yeah. yeah. Why don't we take a break for a few minutes? Yeah. We'll a break? Who needs a break? Yeah, just take a break. Let's go home. You want the gift back? Yeah, I want that gift back. What gift was that? Huh? What gift was that? The one you got. I know what it is. Huh? I know what it was. It's the best Christmas present I ever got. What, what well, yeah, it? I want it back. Tell me about it. Yeah, I'll tell you about it when we get through. <coughs> <coughs> Something for the people in the video to wonder about. You were telling us about World War II and working at a service station by the nut tree. Yeah. What, what, yeah, what about it? Yeah, is, is there anything else you wanted to? Wanted no, to talk no, about? that's all there was to it. <laughs> so, how about you? You were talking about World War II. What, what else do you remember about World War II around Vacaville? You said you had some Japanese friends. And the, had, what? You said you had Japanese friends in Vacaville during World War II. And they well, had... that was when I going to school. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of Japanese people, <clears throat> and when they uh, they <clears throat> told them that they had to leave, I cried my eyes off. Because I, I didn't want to see my friends leave, you know, and they were really good people, nice Japanese. We all got together in the school. We used to help one another with our schoolwork at times, you know. We used to compare. That was when I got a little bit smarter. Then we used to compare. They used to com they wanted some some of them wanted to compare with me, and then some of them wanted to compare. I had to compare with them. And so you know, we we that's how I got out of little school a little bit. <clears throat> but anyhow, that's what. Was while we're on the subject, what else did you remember about Jap Japanese uh, citizens here in Vacaville? Do what now? What else do you remember about the Japanese citizens here in Vacaville? There was nothing more than that. There were good people that all I know of. Mm -hmm. There were, I have no I nothing to say. All, those, all I know about them is that we went to school together and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And everybody liked them. Everybody. No, we never had any uh, problem with the Japanese. They were all farming people people around a little bit, you know, <clears throat> but that's about the size of it. Good people, good people. And I say when they're good people, I mean they are good people. I'm not talking about you're bad today and good tomorrow. You're both. You're not good and you're not bad. <clears throat> Do you remember anything about the, uh, the Great Depression here in Vacaville? The Great Depression? 
Well, I think I remember something about it. I'm not sure. Well, what, when I was young, we were, I was, we were living on uh, Brown Street, their corner of Sack and Brown. And we used to see, looking out, or being outside, saw a bunch of people walking out that way. And I said to my father, what's going on? He said, people that are going on a strike or something. We, we didn't know, we didn't know what, a, what a strike was or, or depression or anything like that. <coughs> but, <coughs> and then they, uh, later on, in, I don't know when, they started to give uh, food away or something. Everybody was getting food, and butter and all that stuff. My father never got anything. My father went ahead and did his own. We didn't need it because my father and mother had their own thing to do, you know, but they never, from that, let me tell you, from that day on, <clears throat> they never ever got any help from the government or whoever it was from uh, during that depression. My father worked hard for what he had. My mother used to walk downtown <clears throat> from where we lived and she used to get big steaks and big uh, good food. She used to buy bags, bags of rice and beans and uh, <clears throat> come down a hit and Chinese store, Japanese, and buy the veg, uh, fruit and stuff like that. Tell me about the stores. Where, where would you buy these things? Oh, just right on the corner there. There was a Japanese, Chinese place. See, there was a good. So, and then, and in those days, what people used to do, <clears throat> you come in if you didn't have the money. Now they get, they write it up, and they put this, put your bill there. When you come back, you go pay. It. And people were honest about it, you know, and. Everybody trusted one another then, but nowadays you can't even oh, look at somebody and you know, say, hey, I don't trust you, so you don't do anything for them, or you know. <laughs> so uh, that's the way it went. But we never, my father and mother, and I'll say it, and I'll say it again, they never got any help from anybody. Even if my father had to work for one dollar a day or a dollar an hour, he went to work for a dollar an hour in those days. That's how we did it. Anybody needed a well clean, he used to go clean out a well. Anybody needed um, cement work done, he was a cement guy too. He do he do all that. He was always he always somebody always gave him a job of one kind or another, no matter what or what it was. He went out and did and done it. You said he did cement. Do you remember places around town where he did cement? Gee, he meant he made oh God, no. I I know he helped over here on the bridge. He on the bridge. I don't remember. We didn't have a car or anything. My father didn't drive. My mother didn't drive. We didn't have a car or anything. The only time we had a car was when my brother, oldest brother, got into high school, I guess, and he was working for John Pellegrini, and then when she had a service station and he fixed automobiles. And my brother used to go there at night and spend the time, evening before, you know, before going to bed. And then and that's where they learned their trade. And my oldest brother was a real good mechanic. <clears throat> and um, um, <clears throat> I lost my train of thought there. <clears throat> well, anyway, what else was I going to say? <laughs> what was I? A few minutes ago, you were talking about uh, the the strike. Workers were going on strike. Oh yeah, that was probably the uh, the uh, strike of 1932, the, what they call the tree pruners strike. Can you tell me anything more I about the, the uh, strike? That strike, I have no more idea than that. Other than they walked down the. And you told me your family didn't participate, right? Did what? Your your family didn't participate in that. No, hell no, hell no. They never did. <laughs> never. Why, why is that? Well, because they knew better, I guess. They wouldn't. They weren't that kind of business people type, but into other people's business. My mother and father kept things to themselves. Mm -hmm. They were always in their own place, and just the way they wanted us to be. We go to school, and you come straight home. You do your work here. We never were allowed to go any to anybody's place. Anyone, you come right home and do what you have to do. That's how my parents were. Do you remember other important events around Vacaville? Just looking back on the history of Vacaville and your life in Vacaville, do you remember important uh, events? I didn't get you up. Do, do you remember any important events around Vacaville? What, what are some of the important things that happened around town over the last uh, 96 years? 
Well, one thing that happened was I was born. <laughs> And that's one of the things that happened. <laughs> that, was a, that was a bad thing that happened. <laughs> that was <a> bad. <laughs> how, how about after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, there was no more. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, was that thing good? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Oh, if you can move the necklace just a little bit off the microphone. Let's see. Oh, I can get it. Oh, you got it. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a list of a bunch of topics here. I've, I've got a bunch of things I want to ask you about. Oh, these, yeah. these are very random. I want to ask you first of all, how about how about Mr. McLaughlin, the mailman? Who? Mr. McLaughlin, the mailman. Oh yeah, what about him? I, he's on my list. I'm supposed to ask you. <clears throat> Let's see. He's a he was a twin to Helen. That I know of, he was a real nice people, real good people in here in town. See the McLaughlin. She I remember them for a long time. I remember them, but I don't remember anything. Know anything about them? Real good people. Let me say something. <clears throat> Let me say something. In those days, Zachary, people were people. They were really nice people. Very friendly. If they didn't know you, they spoke to you. Or they made sure that they said something. But nowadays, you people walk in front of you or behind you or side of you, they don't know you, they don't give a darn who it is or what it is. They can't even speak to you. No, no matter what, I, that's, that's what kills me. That's what kills me in this day and age. I can't stand it. But anyhow, <clears throat> that's people, and what can you do? You can't. <clears throat> How, how else have people changed over time? How do people change? Yeah, how have people changed over time? Well, I'll tell you one thing that they don't do like I used to think, and I look at it. Well, my mother used to work for an example, everybody nowadays. <clears throat> In those days, they used to work their bottoms off. Nowadays, the kids don't know a thing about anything. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They can't follow your directions. They don't. They're just living, that's about all. But they cannot follow what your mom did or do almost what your mom did or anything like that. They don't know anything. They just cannot follow the rules. And they and you know what? They're getting worse. And I hear it from other people that their kids they can't do what you used to do. And this one can't do what the other one did. And that's the way it goes. That's and that is a known fact. <clears throat> Tell me a bit, Josie, about, um, remember anything about the Buck family in town? Who? The Buck family. Black family. The, the Buck family. Oh, the Buck. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know anything about them, but I know of them. I mean, they used to live up there on, um, uh, <clears throat> let's see, where is that? Uh, uh, what is the name of that place there? The grocery store there. A Lucky's? In that area. There used to be a road used to go up in there. Well, right before there was a road there, there used, well, the Hoover used to live up, going up that road. And then before you went up the road, this Monta Vista. And then they had, there was right there, there was a great big house. And then Mrs. Buck used to live there. In that big old house, it's not there anymore. And then uh, that I know of was, uh, let's see if I can remember the name, uh, Victor Carbella moved in there afterwards. And I don't know what the house, so what happened to the house or anything. And then this, this is Mrs. Buck's second marriage, I think. I think, I think her, Mrs. Buck's, her first husband died. No, wait a minute. Or the wife died, and then he married Mrs. This Mrs. Buck. And I think something like that, and that's about all I know of them. We were looking through the uh, one of the photograph books with uh, historical photographs of Backley. You 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 mentioned the the Bucktown photograph. Do you remember anything about Bucktown? Oh no, I do not know a thing about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know the Bucktown existed, mm -hmm. but I know because it's, <clears throat> I had somebody gave me a picture mm -hmm. of Bucktown and I said Bucktown. 
Says, I didn't even know where that was, but it's out there. <clears throat> I got some friends that live in out that way now and stuff like that. It's old book town anymore. Uh -huh. How about the, the Chinese cooks who used to work at the net tree? Oh, gee. They, they, had, they lived in an apartment, right? The apartments that the net tree organized. Can you tell me about that? Well, those, those Chinese used to go to and from uh, San Francisco almost all every time they had a chance. And, and they were, oh, gee, that's uh, what the hell? What was his name? The big guy? What was his name? Remember? I don't. Oh, gee, I had it in my mind, and it just, <clears throat> um, what the heck was his name? Um, oh, God, I can't remember his name. What was his name? I know Dick was one of them, was the second one that came in. Dick, and uh, there was a Tony, he had a son named Tony that worked there. They were really good cooks. Oh, what the heck was the oldest guy? He was a real tall Chinese, really be really nice guy spoke real good English, real good, and he was good. Oh, he was good, very good, a good guy. And then Tony, then uh, Dick used to come in and take over after he passed on or something. But they did really good stuff over at the nursery. All I can say is, <clears throat> there's no. I don't think there's a restaurant right today that will co could compare to what the nursery used to be. Their food. And I can say that very freely. No kidding. They were clean. Everything that came out and you didn't use it, they throw it out. They were really, really clean. That's all I can say there. They were really good people. Very nice. That's all I can say. There's enough words, as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> to pray, or enough words in the dictionary to praise those people the way they were. I want to ask you about a few more things around Vacaville. Oh, golly. Do you I remember uh, Ackerley's store? The Ackerley's? Yeah, I remember the Ackerley's, yeah, years ago. See, they were on, let's see, they were down, Ackerley's were down that way, and I think the store burned down one time. And then there was a, I think he opened up another place somewhere. I don't remember where, but that's about all I know. Because, like I say, we didn't come to town every day. We weren't right. we weren't town town people all the time. You know, like people can't stay home anymore. We stayed home. Tell me about that. Uh, you remember Vacaville Drug, the old Vacaville Drug Company? The Vacaville Drug Company. Down in the Triangle Building. What was it? Down in the Triangle Building. Gee, uh, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. From oh, what, yeah. What about him? Oh, uh, but, well, he wasn't here. He's a newcomer. Oh, newcomer. He, he's a newcomer. He was a newcomer. I remember when, well, I say I remember that he's not, uh, let's see, who was it? where was the drugstore? I can't recall where the drugstore was. <clears throat> I, all I can say is there used to be <clears throat> the, um, what's that club they have? Uh, um, Knights of Columbus or something like that? Knights Odd of Fellows? Odd Fellows. used Odd to have fellows. it up here. Yeah. <laughs> They're up here. Yeah, down the street. Yeah, the yeah, yeah uh -huh. upstairs, up above. Yeah. Yeah, they had that up there a long time. Then I remember there used to be a dentist up there someplace. Then Cecilia Clark was up there too someplace. I'm talking about the, the upstairs. And I can't re remember, I can't remember anything more. There and then there in the corner. What was in the corner? Yeah, there's where the corner. In that corner was there was a drugstore. Mm -hmm. Right there in that triangle thing. Mm -hmm. There was uh, there's where the tr yeah, drugstore. Drug. There was a, a drugstore. Yeah, someplace mm -hmm. in that neighborhood. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Do you remember anything in particular? I don't know. Who. The what? Oh, do you, do you remember anything in particular? Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm going to keep going down the list here, Josie. How about, uh, how about the old movie theater? Movie theater? Yeah, down here on Main Street. Did you ever go see any well, movies? Huh? Did you ever go see any movies? Well, I, at that time I didn't care movies about movies, but I, let me tell you, when I was going to school, what, what grade was it? Was it the high school? It was in high school. 
was a grammar school. Well, and in those days, he used to, <clears throat> whoever got the highest card, highest grade in the report card for that one month, <clears throat> you got one for the highest grade and one for the, the highest improvement. Well, la dee da. <clears throat> I was, came in in one of the high improvement, so I got a, a ticket for a whole month to go to the show, to the movie. So from over there, over here, I used to have to walk every time there was a, mm -hmm. there was a different show. That's about the size yeah. of it. That's do, all I remember. Do you remember the shows? No, heavens no. I, I don't even know one for this on now on TV. <laughs> I don't like those movies. I don't like movies. Anyway. <laughs> How about, uh, earlier, earlier, Josie, you mentioned Constable Statfeld. Oh, Mr. Statfeld was a cop. He, he was here in town. He was a... He was tall and slender, and he had one arm. And he used to be, I don't know if he, I don't know if he just took over the town and made it himself because at that time there was no cop or nothing. And then Elmer King, Elmer King, uh, no, Elmer King was a state police, I think. Oh, Elmer Alley, Alley was a, a city. He came to be the city policeman, and Elmer Alley was a, a state cop at the time. Yeah. And here, and I remember one time, I think it was, uh, who was it, Elmer Ellie? Or was it the state cop? My father bought an old truck <coughs> that we used to drive. <coughs> when we used to go out to pick prunes in the summer, we used to load us up mattress and all, go up there. <coughs> and then we were packed up in a back, big Ford. <laughs> and um, one time my kid brother, he was a, uh, well, I don't know, 13, 14 years of age, he was driving that truck because there was nobody else to drive it. So he was he was driving it, and Elmer Alley, I think it was Elmer Alley that stopped him, or uh, stopped, and he says uh, to my father, he says, Andy, you know he can't be driving out here. He's not supposed to be driving. But he never did anything, he just let, her, let him go and told him not to do it anymore and stuff like that. But that was really nice. That was nice. Now today, you think, yeah, they're ready to write that check, you know, so they can get their money, you know? <laughs> Tell me about it. <clears throat> yeah. Anything else you remember about the... Huh? Anything else you remember about the constable? The constable Statfeld? I didn't hear you right. Anything else you remember about Constable Statfeld? Hmm. No, there was a guy, Avery, he used to be a, a fall here in town, had a, a, a truck that had a canopy over it, and, that, and then he used to go to the stores, and if you didn't have a way to carry your stuff for him, he used to go to the store and get your groceries and deliver it to the house. That was, what was his name? Avery, Art Avery was his name, real nice tall guy. And he used to, was when people didn't have much, the cars and stuff like that, you know. And you had, like for an example, my mother came and had to buy something that was heavy. She couldn't carry it. Well, you get this guy and he come deliver it to you for five for twenty five cents, you know. And, and now what? You're lucky you give him fifty dollars for just a delivery a pack of for a pack of cigarettes. Oh, you know. So goes her. so so goes the show. <laughs> How about the uh, how about the McCunes, the funeral home and the and the soda works place they owned? The McCunes? Yeah. Whoa. They lived down yeah. here on <coughs> They used to be a real nice guy when they real nice person. Everybody liked him. Del McCune? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. Nice he was a nice guy. He liked everybody. He talked to everybody. Real nice person. Didn't you sell toys to Barbara McCune? Do what? Didn't you sell toys to Barbara McHugh? Oh yeah, to their father. Yeah, they used to sell stuff. I used to sell. Yeah. Yeah, they used to buy stuff over there. <laughs> and then also that, uh, I guess he was one from the. Uh, oh. Kaiser, that used to, they used to hear one of the Kaiser fellows. They had a, they had to make a special car for him to get in and out of the car. And he used to come in and drive, buy some toys. He didn't buy toys. He bought books for a little guy. He says, if you can teach a little kid how to say, yeah, 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 
you can teach them how to say books or something like that. You know, the higher words instead of baby talk. Mm -hmm. You never talk baby talk. It was all big stuff. You know, if you can learn it this way, you can learn it out of what's in the book. But why teach him uh, baby talk? But he never believed in baby talk. So he used to buy big books. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. How about the old back of the swimming pool? Do you remember that? Yeah, it was just, <clears throat> if, um, what you call it, um, Bobby Mc Bob McLaughlin, it's a sister. <laughs> she and I we used to go in a, we used to walk out there to the swimming pool and go swimming while they were almost clean. But it was, it was it early morning or late at night? Early morning. Early morning. We used to go out there walking to go swimming at the swimming pool. Sure. And where was that? I, I don't know where it was. Oh, was it, it was uh, over there where they had uh, across. It was on the other side. It was um, um, hmm. Witcher Road. Huh? Uh, yeah, where that restaurant used to be. What was that restaurant? The Remark. Huh? The Remark. Remark? It's called the Remark. Is that what it was? Yeah. Well, there's where it was. Right there. Yeah. There was a swimming pool was there. Yeah, I went there once when I was a kid. Huh? I went there once when I was a kid. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that that's about the size of it, but we didn't... Uh, gee, my, my Kleenex are turning out to be rags. Huh? <laughs> We'll get you another one here. The Z? Is that it? Um, I can't hear it. Let's see. No Kleenex in the place? Unbelievable, yeah. I can't seem to find it. You can oh, see. Paper towel or toilet, no. toilet paper? Or toilet paper? Yeah, I, I can run upstairs and grab some. So, Jesse, these, these are kind of ordinary things, but uh, what, tell me about uh, was, there, was there a bakery in town? Or did, any, Tell me about a bakery, if there was a bakery in town. Let's see. They had <clears throat> the nicest bakery here in town you could ever shake a stick at. Real good Spanish people used to make bread there. Oh, it was really good. Just a real good old bakery. Real good. Almost as good as my bread my mother used to make in that Dutch oven. <laughs> no, no, they made, up, they made a little bit of everything. But it was really, and I think, who's there now? Is that a barbershop? Isn't there a barbershop over there now? Where that bakery used to be? Maybe. You remember the girl worked at the nutry? What's her name? That yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow. <clears throat> Do you have any memories of the old post office when it was still a post office? The post office. Yeah, my brother and my father helped build that thing. My brother, when he got out of high school, first job he had was to build the, the post office right here in town. Mm -hmm. And then after he got through with that, he went, went to uh, Oakland and went and became a carpenter over there. A real good carpenter. Everybody liked him. And he, and he used to say, <clears throat> he said that for 15 years he worked seven days a week because everybody who had his real job then everybody wanted him to work on those days off that he had so he worked for 15 years he worked saturdays and sundays and he was his own boss they liked him so well that the bosses used to say well you go ahead and do what you have to do you know they gave him the okay for anything and he's passed on he was a real good guy brother george Did you ever go to the, uh, did you ever go to Strawman's? Strong, oh, Joe Strawman's? Yeah. There were no, oh, yes. There was Joe and Harry Strawman's. Yeah, they had a nice store there. And the Cranstons, oh, the Cranstons, they were really sweet people. We used to go out partying all the time. <clears throat> and I got a few things that I bought from there, you know. Yeah, like, like what? Oh, I, well, you know, that well, scale for one, and then, um, God, I can't remember now. I got other things. Cranston's Hardware, right? The what? Cranston's Hardware Store. Yeah, yeah. Cranston's Hardware. Hardware, yeah. It was on Main Street. Yeah. Well, they were good people. Oh, they were nice people. And Joe Strawman, they had everybody that was about the only uh, clothing store that was in town. 
at the time that I know of that I can remember. Although you told me earlier today, you told me you used to, uh, you bought some clothes at Tortosa Brothers. The what? You bought some clothes at Tortosa Brothers. Oh yeah, what was it, it Manuel Tortosa? Oh yeah, there he had a nice store there. Nice clothing store, men clothes, men and women. He had bought a real nice clothes. It was expensive stuff, but we, you know. <laughs> well, you know how it is. <laughs> how about barber shops? Did you guys cut your hair at home, or did you go to a barber shop? No, we used to go to Bar Joe the barber. at one time when I went in, we and I who oh, used to cut my hair. We used to go to the barber shop all the time to get our hair cut. Oh, beauty shop, Cecilia Clark. Cecilia Clark used to give us our permanents and do our hair. Uh -huh. Where was that? Right up here. Right down, right here up above. But she, she had a good business. And the people, <clears throat> some people, and let me tell you again, a Spanish, almost like a Mexican, a Spanish people, they used to say, <clears throat> To Cecilia Clark, how come you give the silver girls a good, good permanent, and ours don't turn out like you give theirs? I said, well, I can see this to say she's a good friend of mine. <clears throat> she used to say, well, it depends on the hair, you know. So uh, that's the way it was. They always thought they always did. Somebody always did better for the silver girls than they did for you, you know. That's the way. I think people were just jealous. I don't know. That's what we think. But she did the same thing. Well, would she do anything different when she had all their things that she needed there to work on? Why would she go put hers, this one aside and that one? You know, a little bit loco or something up upstairs or something. <laughs> How about the library? Did you ever spend any time at the library? No, I never went. I was no, I never did. But I'll tell you what, something about library when I was little. When I was little, going to school, I had, I don't know what grade it was, it must have been a second or third grade. There was a little book, <laughs> it was a little red hen, and I'll never forget that. And I carried that doggone book day in and day out to and from school, all, all the time. Every time I went to school, I carried that little red book. But I don't know, I can't remember now if I, could, if I was able to read it or not. <laughs> I can't tell you if I did or not. <laughs> But it, I can remember taking that book to and from all the time. <laughs> and then in one time, one grade school, and one uh, another grade, I had a, we had to read out loud. So this one girl says to me, Josie, I like to hear you read. You know, she had to hear, like to hear me read out loud in this class. I said, well, I, I never knew I knew how to read. <laughs> well, anyway, that's what he goes. That's it. No, I've got, I've got a few more for you. How about the how about the bank? Did your family use the bank around town? A bank? Yeah. Yeah, I guess they did. Yeah, they kind of had a bank in town then, huh? Did your family go to the bank? Uh, you remember going to the bank at all? No. No, but I, we, yes, we used to, I do remember going to <clears throat> at the bank at one time. They used to <clears throat> you were going in. And they used to make little banks. I got, gee, you know. I had a flat square one. It was flat like that. And, we, and uh, we used to put little money in it. And I remember over there where we used to live on um, Brown Street, Sacramento Brown, so none of my brothers and sisters could get a hold of our banks. We used to go and dig a hole around a tree. And who knows, maybe one of our banks are still under there with that 100, with that um, a coin, what's that coin, 1926 during the earthquake, 19, something like that. Or, or some that coin like that has really cost, a, that's really a lot of money. You're going to start a back and treasure hunt. Hey, what they got, they built that, they built that, uh, they built that the Mexican store over the big Mexican house over there. It was covered up. You're going to tear that thing down for, for a penny? Are you kidding? Well, speaking of pennies, I hear you used to save all the wheat pennies from the toy shop. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. So happy. And I had one that a, a, a VDB penny uh, night when the earthquake nineteen what was it nineteen twenty six. 1906. 1906. Yeah, 1906. Minute in San Francisco, and that penny's worth. I think it was worth two hundred dollars or more now. And me, like a fool, I gave it to my nephew. Well, what can I do with it? He's got it. He's a saver. He's the one that makes money like you. Seventy-five. He makes making seventy-five dollars an hour. Tell me a little bit, Josie, about the uh, the telephone system. What, tell me about what telephone system? Yeah, tell me about the telephone company here in town. Tell, before before he had before. These, uh, well, I can remember my mother and father never had a telephone, so I was working at the nut tree, and I thought, well, I saved a penny, so I ordered a <clears throat> uh, the telephone company to come in and put a telephone in the house. So they came in and put a telephone and what the heck was it? I think we were paying 15 cents, 15 cents, 15 dollars an hour at that time, straight. 15 cents an hour. Look now, now they grab your foot. Take it. <laughs> so Josie, oh, 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 our families have known each other a long time. Who? Our families have known each other a long time. Right? Yeah, I think so. There's my mom's family, the four cell family. My, my mom's family, the Forcell family, and uh, my dad's side of the family, the Fruling family. I wanted to hear a little bit about how you how you knew my family. Well, it wasn't my brothers going to school. They used to know uh, Velma. Yeah, Velma, Fr Velma Fruling. She yeah, they, used, they used to know, and that's how we know, through through uh, talk, you know, mm -hmm. know, one another. She said, oh, so-and-so used to go, and Harold, wasn't it Harold? Harold, my grandmother's brother. Yeah, Harold well then, Johnson. see, my brothers went to school okay, with them, and they used to talk about Harold going to school, and I, that's how we know him, but other than that, we don't know. Do you remember the old uh, Presbyterian uh, church? Yes, I do remember that. What are some things you remember about the old Presbyterian church? On, oh, uh, on gee, I, I never went in, I went into it once or twice. Well, you, you were Catholic, so you didn't go there. Yeah, well, church. yeah, well, I went in one time because somebody passed away, and they were held the thing there, and... I went, that's, and that's about it that I know of. Do you remember my grandfather there? I remember seeing him, but yeah. that's about about all, you know, don't. But you, you mainly knew my mom from the toy shop, right? I knew you as Grandma Josie. You know, all my grandparents are dead now, and I know you as Grandma Josie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how about how about later in life, Josie? After all this stuff, you know, you're 96 years old now. What do you, what do you, uh, what have you learned in 96 years, you know? What, what did I learn in 96? Well, I didn't learn anything, to tell you the truth, but I wish I would have learned something. Right now, I wish I was as smart as you and the other one and the other one, but I don't know anything. I'm still, uh, I'm still learning, let's put it that way, or try to learn. Well, you did some traveling later in life. You went to Arizona and Maine and some other places, right? I went from one state to the other. We would travel all practically in most of the states, you know, just going by through, you know. That's about it. Any, uh, any favorite places you've ever been? <laughs> well, not Wait, really, because it was you? only now, now and then Arizona. I liked Arizona, but if I'd have stayed there a little longer, I would have been dead. The heat got me. Josie, didn't you meet Rock Hudson in Hawaii? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Rock Hudson. Oh, I'll never forget that. We were at this place, and he was there, and we were around the swimming pool. So he went ahead and threw a dollar bill, not a dollar bill, a dollar silver dollar or something in the pool. He says, he asked me to go in and drive in for it. I was asking me, Rock Hudson himself, that's right, and, and to go in and get it. And I said, I couldn't swim, I'd drown if I, he'd have to, <laughs> Bring me up instead of the dollar bill, and the dollar, you know. I couldn't swim, <laughs> so I said, "Oh, I'll be darned!" So I walked up with him, we were just a nice little chat and all that. But that—that's right. All right, that's about all. And then here, one time we were in on a cruise, and uh, the captain there comes up. There was a. Five or six of us girls who went together. 
And um, <laughs> this one guy says, the, uh, the captain, after we were having dinner, we were going to have a dance. So the captain comes up. And we were, uh, the five or six of us were together. And just, he comes to me and asks me, come on, I want to dance with you. You, you know, tell me to dance. I said, oh, no, I can't dance. I don't know how to dance. He said, oh, no, you don't even know how to dance. I did. But why did he come to me? Why didn't he get the other girls that knew how to dance? I didn't know. So I got up and danced with them and for a few steps, and that's about the size of it. <laughs> and la di da. Well, Josie, I'm running out of things to ask. What, 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 what haven't I asked you about? What do you wish I would have asked you? Do what? What do you wish I would have asked you? Well, I want you to find out. I want to know from you. What do you think of me? Do you really, really like me? Do you think I'm a good person? Or what kind of a person am I? I think you're the saltiest of the salt of the earth. The falsiest? The, False? The, 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 the saltiest of the salt of the earth. <laughs> no, I have no idea. All I know is that I love you and I love your people. Your mom and dad, your mom, and I love your dad too, but your mom and your sister, I really, really like you people. You people are helping me a lot. You're helping me out of my rut or helping me live, let's put it that way too. And there isn't enough words in, uh, what are those big fat, uh, um, uh, dictionaries that they used to build, they make it. Like, there's enough words in a dictionary, let's put it that way, to express, to express my feelings about you people. And I sincerely mean it. Josie, I, I think everyone who knows you feels the same way about you. And that's the way I want to go out of this world. I have, one, I have one last question for you. Any, any regrets? What you say, Jack? I have one last question for you. Do you have any regrets? A what? Do you have any regrets? I have my regrets. Do, do you have any? Do I have any regrets? Mm -hmm. I really don't think I have that I know of, but especially this now. I know for one thing in my mind, I do not hate, hate anybody. And if anybody hurt me, I always forgive, don't matter. People are more important than than the problem, let's put it that way. But not, I, I, I can't re think of any regrets that I have. I can't think. Like I was telling my, one of my nieces here the other day, I says, you know, I cannot remember ever telling a lie. And I got to thinking. And thinking, that was, I was, going, I was in bed, or going to bed, and everything, I got to, gee, I, that's what, that's what came to my mind, and I got the phone the next day and I told my niece about it. I don't remember, and what kind of a lie did I say if I said, like, what did I say? What could I say? Got the thing, and I, and I said, I couldn't remember. Who won? I just can't. If I did, if I knew of a, of a lie that I said to you or anybody else, I would come out and tell you because I don't care if you know it or not, you know? I don't care. And, that, and that's about the size of it, you know? I, what else can I say? I can't think of anything. Do you have one to remind me of? <laughs> <laughs>
I've got a laundry list. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me know. <laughs> well, there'll be, I, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. Okay, that's just we'll, we'll, we'll see you in 10 more years. We'll do one at 106, okay? <laughs> Well, let's hope so, but I doubt it. Well, you said that 10 years ago at 86, if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just never know. All right. Well, thanks for the time, Josie. Cool. Uh, well, should I say thank you, and now you got me in trouble. <laughs> you know when you get out? For the record, I am in trouble when I get home. Yeah, you are in trouble, Zachary. <coughs> uh. All right. Thanks, everyone. Just to see. There we go. I was gonna get stuck. Oh, she's covered. Never mind. All right. We're good. Yep. Yeah, we're done. Awesome.